Hi, I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography, and my biggest passion is taking photographs of outer space. Now, sometimes I need a little break from carrying around heavy telescopes and heavy telescope tracking mounts, and I just want to go back to my roots, so that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I want to shoot the Milky Way. Now, you may be thinking, what, isn't Milky Way season in the summertime? Well, yeah, technically that's Milky Way core season. The Milky Way core is very bright and easy to shoot. You can do it with just a camera and a wide angle lens or even your phone. But even though it's wintertime, we're still in the Milky Way. It's still up there. It's just, we're not looking into the core. It's a lot dimmer and it's gonna be a bit more of a challenge to shoot. And I'm ready for that challenge. I'm gonna try to pull it off with a camera, wide angle lens and a star tracker. Wanna see if I can pull it off? Join us in today's episode of The, the Adventures, Adventures of the, of the Intergalactic, Intergalactic Space, Space Muster. Okay, here we are in Stellarium on the desktop. The first thing I'm gonna do is scroll on over to the northwest. There we go. There you can kind of see the very dim uh, winter Milky Way right there. So I'm gonna go over here to the left and open up sky and viewing options. And right here, Milky Way brightness and saturation. Just crank that on up. Boy, I wish there was a real life way to do this. Oh yeah, it's called a shutter speed dial. Okay, so we can clearly see where the winter Milky Way is. It's right here in the northwest. Keep in mind, I'm in the northern hemisphere. All right, and we can look up and see it arch through the entire sky and come back down over here in the southeast right next to the constellation of Orion. That would be a cool shot right there with Orion on the right and the Milky Way on the left. But right now, the best view in my yard is over here in the northwest. The southeast has a lot of phone poles and farming equipment and all kinds of stuff. And I just feel like shooting from the backyard. The camera I'll be using is a Canon Rebel T5i, also known as the 700D. Now this model is astro modified. That means it picks up more light in the red spectrum, specifically hydrogen alpha light. Is this necessary? Not really. I mean, really I'm going for stars and dust and gas instead of focusing on red emission nebulae, but there are some in there. So, I mean, it kind of helps bring those little red splotches out, but really it's not necessary. Now the lens I'm using is a Tamron 24 to 70 F 2.8. So that means it's a very fast lens. It picks up a lot of light. And so that's great. I'll be mounting this to a small star tracker that'll allow me to track the stars as they move across the night sky. And I'll be able to take very long exposures, much longer than normal and pick up so much more detail. Now I just gotta find my star tracker. I don't think I've picked it up since my trip out to the desert in July. Oh, here it is. This is the iOptron Skyguider Pro Star Tracker. If you're not familiar with star trackers and how they work, let me give you a quick overview. You take your star tracker base and attach it to a good sturdy tripod, then take it outside, set it on the ground facing north. You need to be able to look up through the star tracker base and see the North Star directly overhead. Once you get pointing at the North Star, attach your star tracker to the star tracker base on your tripod, tighten it down. Now we need to polar line to the North Celestial Pole. We look through the polar scope right here and we see a little circle that's illuminated on the inside once we turn the star tracker on. Now we're trying to get the North Star in the right spot inside that circle. So we use an app like Polar Finder. That little white dot right there, that's where Polaris or the North Star is supposed to be inside the circle in here. So I've got these bolts right here that'll move it left, right. This knob right here that moves it up, down. And I just adjust those until I see Polaris right in the spot where it needs to be. The Star Tracker came with this declination bracket, this counterweight rod and a counterweight to balance my setup. And I'm gonna take a ball head and attach it to the top. And now I can clamp this on the front of the Star Tracker. Now to attach your camera to the ball head, you need an Arca Swiss plate. And I've got this really long one right here. I use the extra long one because it helps me achieve perfect balance. And speaking of balance, let's check for it. If this thing is not properly balanced, it's gonna put extra strain on the gears in here and it's not gonna track properly. 
So I'm gonna loosen this little clutch right here on the front of the Star Tracker. And just let it fall. It's almost balanced. So if it was really out of balance, it would fall forward like that or down like that, and that's not good. So I just loosen my counterweight and slide it until it stays still. That's only the first half of balance though. Now I need to point it in the direction I'm gonna be shooting, which is gonna be up here in the Northwest. See what happens when I let go. You know, it fell like that. I think that means it's the front right here is a little heavy and I need to pull the whole thing back in the ball head a little bit. Basically what I'm saying is I need to pull the Arca Swiss plate back that way. And see that? It's not falling in any direction now. That's good and balanced. It's not gonna be putting any strain on the gears in here. Now to get a bright detailed image, we want to get as much time on this as possible. So that not only means taking long exposures, I like to do three minute exposures, but I wanna to try to take as many of them as possible. A lot of photos of the exact same thing and use stacking software to stack these on top of each other to get one image that has like two or three hours worth of light. Now in order to make that a reality, I'm gonna use an accessory like this. This is a little remote called an intervalometer. Not only will it allow your camera to shoot over 30 seconds, you can program it to shoot however long you can imagine as long as your camera is in bulb mode. It'll also take a series of photos. So you can program it to say, take 30 photos at three minutes each. And I just have some Velcro on the side of the stand. So I just kind of Velcro this thing to the tripod stand, plug it into the side of the camera over here. Make sure the cord is not gonna tangle on anything when I actually stick it to the Velcro on the other side. There we go. That's it, that's the setup I'm gonna use. And I will show you one more accessory that I also use. This is a dummy battery. It allows me to plug my camera up into AC power and I can run my camera all night without having to worry about a battery. You don't have to have one of these. You can just get multiple backup batteries if you wanna shoot for a long time. But this really helps. And what I plug it into is usually a big portable battery like this. One hour later. Okay, we're set up. Now I'm gonna turn the star tracker on, look through the polar scope, and align this thing with Polaris, the North Star, according to what the app Polar Finder says it should be. Now I'm gonna point this camera in the direction I'm shooting tonight and check for balance. That took a few minutes to get right, but we're good in balance now. So now we're gonna find a star to focus on. All right, we got a star on the back of our live view screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and move the focus ring or focus wheel until it is as small of a pinpoint as possible. Oop, there we go, that was quick. I think that's about as close as we're gonna get. Now I'm gonna reframe my camera, to kind of point in the direction of the Milky Way I'm trying to shoot. I gotta let my eyes adjust. Let's take a quick peek at our camera settings. Camera settings, yay! So you can see my shutter speed is in bulb mode, aperture is f4.0, and the ISO is 800. I've got the intervalometer programmed to take a three-minute exposure, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit start on that, and we're going to take a picture. And it's just a bunch of star trails. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty bad. I'm going to have to check my polar alignment and balance again before we move on. Now, typically when you're using a star tracker and you're still getting star trails on your long exposures, that means your polar alignment's probably off or your balance is probably off. But in this case, it was neither. It was my star tracker. My star tracker wasn't tracking stars. Or in other words, it wasn't working, it was broke. Now I've had this thing for four years and it's only done this one other time, so I kind of knew what to do. But also it's been sitting in a shed that's not temperature regulated for the last six months, so. Yeah, something probably got a little rust in it or something, but let me show you how I fixed it real quick. With the iOptron Skyguider Pro, I'm gonna have to take this black top off to expose the inside, the gears. And I do that by taking out these four screws here, 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 here. You need the proper Allen keys to be able to pull this off. buttons. 
So here's the inside of the top of the Sky Guider Pro. And basically, when you turn it on, you can see all these gears start to move. Well, that night, the gears weren't moving at all, not even a little bit. It was just like it was off, like this. Now it's not currently broken, so I can't quite show you how I fix it. Also, I apologize for my shaky hands, but basically what I did was I turned on the power switch right there. None of the gears were moving, so I took a little Allen key and I kind of tapped this black gear right here over on the right. And after a few times, everything just fired back up and it was working just like new. And that's all I had to do. And then I just put the buttons back on. Where did I do? There they are. And the cap back on. Screw everything back down and it should be good as new. All right, now that we got that working, let's try it again, shall we? Let's take a three minute test shot. Oh, that was, that looked great. Let's check that out. Hold on. Yes absolutely no star trails that I can see. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and program my intervalometer to take 30 of those three minute exposures. Normally I take many more than that, but this camera is kind of pointing northwest, and so it's going to move that way downwards into the horizon. And after only about an hour or two, it'll probably be facing towards the tree line back there. So I'll be lucky if I can get 30 shots. The shots I'm taking of the stars back there are called my light frames. And when they're done, I'm gonna take another set of photos called dark frames. So basically when this camera is taking long exposures, the sensor heats up and creates noise. And we wanna get rid of that noise. So we do that by taking the lens cap. As soon as we're done shooting our light frames, putting it back on the camera, keeping all the settings the exact same and taking about another 20 or 30 photos with the lens cap on. These will be photos of just the noise so when we go into the stacking software and stack all our light frames, we'll also include the dark frames and they will pull out that thermal noise created from the long exposures. It's awesome. When I'm done imaging, I'm gonna take all my files and dump them into the computer and stack them in a free program for Windows called Sequator or Sequator or whatever. If you have a Mac, you might wanna try Serial. That's also free stacking software. But Sequator is very easy. I love using it. So let's jump in here and check it out. So we click on star images to load in our light frames. I've already kind of got them organized in here. I just click one, hold shift, and click the last one and load them all in. For our dark frames, the ones we took the lens cap on, click noise images. Now I've already got my dark frames saved in their own folder, so I just add all those as well. There we go. Select where to save the final file. Just choose any kind of folder. I usually create a folder called final and give it a name. Something like Western Milk. Yeah, just like that. Now we're gonna come down here to where it says accumulation. Click that, click select best pixels and turn the slider all the way up to strict and just go ahead and hit start. All right, it finished and it only took 35 seconds. This is a really fast program. We can then open that stacked file in Photoshop or PixInsight or Cyril or any photo editing software and edit it to our heart's content. I usually like to use a combination of everything. All right, everybody, I'd like to show you how I process this image, but that's probably gonna have to be for another video because I'm trying to keep this video under 30 minutes long for a change. One thing I did a little differently this time is instead of trying to keep the stars small, I just kind of let them be because when you point at this section of the Milky Way or, or this section of the sky, the stars are so thick, it's like looking at sand. It's the most amazing thing. If you ever want to feel small, take this photograph. It's going to blow you away. Speaking of processing videos, guys, I just launched a Patreon. So if you're a fan of this channel and you want to support me in any way, go over there and consider becoming a patron. And one of the benefits you get is you get extra videos, extra tutorials, bloopers, life updates, things like that. You also get access to a private Discord server where you can communicate with me and other people as well. You can help me choose what kind of videos to make. That Discord server I created, that's private for my patrons only, so there's not going to be a bunch of crazy people in there. It's just for you guys. All right, everybody, that about wraps it up for this one. Thank you so much for sticking around. You guys are so amazing as always. If you liked the video, let me know in the comments or leave me a like, a super like, anything like that, and please subscribe to the channel. 
I got big aspirations for this year. Okay, well, as always, stay spacey, watch out for snakes, clear skies. See you next time.